Good afternoon. My name is Kimberly Kleinhans, and I'm a PhD student in Education, Evaluation, and Research at Wayne State University. I have a master's degree in public administration and a graduate certificate in economic development, also from Wayne State University. I was recently hired as the administrator for the Michigan Dance Council, a nonprofit organization that links dance throughout the state. The topic for this webinar is a creative and innovative culture, strateg strategies for utilizing the current capacities of arts councils in Michigan. This webinar is supported in part uh, to the receipt of financial assistance and support from the United States Department of Commerce, Economic Development Administration, and the MSU EDA Center for Economic Innovation. The statements, findings, conclusions, and recommendations are solely those of the authors and publishers and do not necessarily reflect the views of any federal agency, Michigan State University, Wayne State University, or the Michigan Dance Council. Uh, before we go any further, uh, we need to look at how to define innovation. The word innovation is kind of a buzzword right now. It appears everywhere, which means that it obviously is an important concept in popular culture, but also means that as the word gets misused or overused, its meaning becomes diluted. Uh, kind of an example of this is that there's a chocolate bar, which is sold at Meyer, which is touted as being innovative chocolate. I think it may be possible to have innovative chocolate, but I am not sure that this particular chocolate is especially innovative. Delicious? Yes. Innovative? Maybe not. But this is a good example of how the word is overused. An even more telling example of the pervasiveness of the word innovation is its appearance in this season's Sesame Street as a word of the day. In this episode, Elmo helps the three little pigs build a wolf-proof house through innovation. Obviously, if Elmo thinks innovation is an important concept to teach the young viewers at home, it is a concept with some cultural traction. Elmo defines innovation as something new or different. This may, definition may be more accurate than the innovative chocolate example, but still may be too broad of a definition to be of any practical benefit for economic development purposes. Some definitions of innovation that I came across include one from Webster's Dictionary, which defines it as the introduction of something new, with an etymology from the Latin word novus or new. Another definition of innovation that I came across from writer Palman describes innovation as the part of the creative process where ideas that have been generated begin to be implemented and accepted. A third way of defining innovation comes from Glavenau, who quotes Baldwin as saying, effective invention is always rooted in the knowledge already possessed by society. And no effective invention ever makes an absolute break with the culture, tradition, fund of knowledge treasured up from the past. Lavenu came up with this way of looking at what he calls innovative creativity as being nested within improvisational creativity, which is nested within habitual creativity. Habitual creativity is the type of creativity where activities that are repeated over and over get done in different ways. People do this with their work, where as they perform the same task through the years, they fine-tune their processes to become more efficient. Improvisational creativity happens when there is a problem or a difficulty. Things can't be done the same way or through traditional methods. I think about MacGyver and how he could disarm a missile with a paper clip. This does not mean that office supplies are going to be the new method for disarming missiles in the future, but it solves the dilemma at hand. Glavenau says that innovative creativity is when there is a conscious intention to solve the problem in a new way. I asked economic development professionals in Michigan to help me define innovation. Thirteen responses were collected from respondents who were made aware of the survey by email. Overwhelmingly, the responses indicated that innovation is some sort of creation and also something new. The slide shows a summary of the keywords in the responses. In addition to create, creation and, and, and new, there also is grow, foster, facilitate, different. A couple people referred to the dictionary definition. Uh, 
change, shift from current practice, results, excitement, developed intellectual or physical ideas, adaptation, non-traditional, vision, and collaboration. So we have to come to a conclusion about the definition of innovation. I have settled on the creation of something new rooted in tradition. In the context of economic development in Michigan, the innovation can be a new economic development practice or a practice that can increase the capabilities of Michiganders to produce innovative ideas. Best practices. There are many best practices out there. I have chosen three that are easy to implement. The first practice I want to look at today is Michigan's placemaking initiative. This falls under the category of innovative economic development practice. It can be described as the new way that the state of Michigan is creating places where people want to live and work. It is similar to the methods that are being used in Italy's Motor Valley cluster. There's an effort to create a sense of place. It is rooted in the tradition of place-based economic and community development that started in the progressive era. The next best practice that I'm looking at today is using networking as a means of helping people be more innovative. Harad's research found that the most creative people lack a way to get their ideas fully developed. The recommendation is to have a middle ground to bridge the gap and to foster networking through supporting business services, organizing fairs, festivals, and exhibitions, and implementing interactive websites. Okay. When we look at diversity in innovation, um, we have a quote here from Bacon Levant that says, diversity has a positive effect on creativity, innovation, and performance at all different scales from the company or organization to city, region, or country. And also that cultural and ethnic diversity is assumed to be important in the knowledge creation process since more differentiated knowledge increases the possible combination of knowledge and knowledge networks. One way that diversity helps with creativity and innovation is that people realize that there is more than one way to do things. If we look at diversity data for the state of Michigan from the 2011 American Community Survey, we see that the estimate for the category white is considerably larger than any other race category. However, this type of breakdown hides a lot of diversity in its oversimplification of the data. When the population of the state of Michigan is looked at broken down by ancestry, about 100 different groups are represented, many of those being subset of the race white. The impact of diversity on creativity and innovation has been studied in Europe among diverse populations that if looked at in America would be all considered under the homogenous terms white, European American, or Caucasian. This is not to say that diversity within the white population or within the Asian, Black, Hispanic, or Native pop American populations should be considered completely instead of conversations about diversity between the races. This is just an observation that diversity is difficult to quantify and cultural competency in diversity training could be a step in the direction of recognition of those who have different cultural, racial, and ethnic identities. In this list from the 2011 American Community Survey, there are close to 3 million people who have, no, who have ancestry from other groups not listed in this table. For example, there are no Native American or Asian heritage groups listed. The total for this table is greater than the population of Michigan because many people have ancestry from one or more of these groups. These maps come from the 2010 Census Data Mapper. They show the percentage of different races by county in the state of Michigan. The darker the color, the higher percentage of each race group in that county. What it says to me is that the issue in Michigan is more of an issue of segregation rather than a lack of diversity. I was surprised to see that there's some African-American population in the Upper Peninsula, uh, but when I looked at a map of where 
uh, prisons are located, those are all counties that have prisons. So that could be the reason or could not be. But I, I know that um, if you look at these maps, it's almost like you could cut out the pieces and put together a puzzle of where everybody is. Um, so what the best practice suggestion here is to increase interaction and understanding through some diversity trainings. Uh, and if I think back, you know, in, into history, and Detroit was much more innovative when it was a melting pot before everyone moved out into the suburbs, into their segregated communities. Next, we are going to look at arts councils in Michigan as potential facilitators of innovation. One trend that has become popular in the past few years is to look at the economic impact of the arts. The Michigan Cultural Data Project collects information from arts organizations. For example, they found that in fiscal year 2010, 553 million was spent by Michigan arts, arts organizations in salaries, services, and materials, and more than $2 billion were spent on arts and culture tourist activities. I wanted to look at arts councils for more than just their economic impact, but to see how they could help with fostering innovation. First, Michigan's arts councils were cataloged and mapped. Here's a map showing the locations of arts councils in Michigan. For the most part, they are located throughout the state. We were very specific in what organizations we included on our list. They had to specifically have the words arts and council in their name. We also sent out a survey to get more information about the Arts Councils and their activities. We looked at the service area of the Arts Council, and so all these answers um, are just what the Arts Council said themselves, so what they considered themselves. So it's, it's their, I guess their opinion about their activities rather than actual counting and numbers of their activities. So, they consider them, what they consider themselves to be, in this case, really ranges greatly. There's rural areas, regions representing more than one county, counties, suburbs of large cities, and small towns, and medium-sized towns. There weren't any large cities that responded, but I don't know that any of Michigan's large cities have their own specific, just to their city, arts council. I don't think Detroit has an arts council that I found. I know that the Grand Rapids Arts Council disbanded a couple years ago. Uh, I asked the Arts Councils about participation, and they, were, they didn't actually need to count how many participants they had, just kind of what they saw from their activities. And they were uh, asked for all these different age groups, whether a small amount a medium amount or a large amount of participants came to their activities and workshops. And this is the data from what they said were the large amount of participants. The age group from 26 to 35 is considered the millennial uh, generation and right now they're kind of being targeted with economic development. A lot of the placemaking activities are looking at this age group because they want, they want them to come live in their cities. Um, this age group has, does more economic activity and is, is kind of the future. So when I looked, asked the arts councils, nobody said they didn't have any participation from this age group, which is good. And some had a large amount, some had a small amount, and the majority had a medium amount participation from this age group. And as far as support or mentoring for the artists who are in need of professional development or wanting to start their own art space small business, it was about half and half, 45% said yes and 55% and said no. Um, this would be important for um, for some of the networking, but also possibly for, um, you know, job creation and things like that. Does your Arts Council provide any support for local businesses? 73% of the Arts Councils said that they're 
activities supported local businesses. Some of them it was people come for our arts festival and they stay in the hotels and they eat in the restaurants. Some work directly with local businesses. Um, some were just starting out and they didn't have anything really established as far as working with local businesses. Uh, this again would be important for networking because to, to have a network you need to work not just with an arts council but with the, the businesses and the surrounding um, with other things in the surrounding community. Does your arts council host or sponsor local cultural events or programs? This one was 50-50. I asked this question because I wanted to see what arts councils might be um, good candidates for doing more kind of cultural and diversity training. So if, you're if they were already doing cultural heritage events and they were already talking about things um, that might, be, might lend them towards um, being able to have the capacity to host diversity trainings. Does your Arts Council host or sponsor events or programs focused on local history or local historical events? Mostly they did not, although a few did. And this I asked because of the um, kind of creating a sense of place, more of the place making and, you know, when you connect your arts scene with the history of your city, that's really making it more like a solid idea of what it is to be in this place that you are at. So um, most arts councils sponsored contests of different sorts. Um, there is some research. I didn't include it because I wanted to sort of streamline um, the, the uh, research. But there is some research out there that says competition does help with innovation because people want to look for new ways of doing things. Rather than just doing things the old ways, they want to look for new ways of doing things. And I thought that arts councils that are already sponsoring contests already are kind of networking with people. Um, they might be able to sponsor contests for um, different kinds of innovation activities. So that's, that, that was why that question was included. Does your Arts Council host or sponsor arts education programs or activities? Again, most of them did. 86% said yes, they did. I thought that would be a good indicator of an Arts Council that has a capacity for diversity trainings um, because they're already educating people. They're already, you know, holding classes. They could easily say we're holding a class about diversity kind of made a little matrix of what uh, strategies would be good for which uh, capacities of the arts councils. Um, the placemaking really can be, it's very versatile, uh, and there's a lot of stuff being done with that right now, and it really goes through um, different agencies, and, and I think that placemaking activities would be appropriate for any of the arts councils, no matter what their, their um, activities are, because they already are a place-based thing. You know, the, the Clare County Arts Council is based on the place in Clare. The Mackinac Arts Council is based in Mackinac. The Lansing area is Lansing area. So they already are identified as a place, so it would be appropriate for any of them. Diversity trainings, I thought that if they already were hosting events based on cultural heritage, hosting arts education events, and possibly those that are hosting contests would be good candidates for suggesting diversity trainings. And then networking, I thought would be appropriate for people who have a large number of millennial participants they're already providing mentoring for artists, and they're already supporting local businesses. I have a couple of case studies here of just some of the information that came out through the survey. Um, I wanted to look closer at some of the different 
responses and, and kind of go over what might be appropriate for each particular Arts Council. Um, the Farmington Community Arts Council uh, said this in their survey, the 2013 Festival of the Arts theme is Color the World and will promote multiculturalism in the arts. Um, that very obviously to me is, is working with the diversity training and working with um, uh, getting to be multicultural. So that was, that was an easy one. <laughs> Uh, the Clare County Arts Council uh, gave a lot of uh, qualitative information here. Uh, they hold monthly meetings. Each month, each month a different artist demonstrates their art. Uh, they just did an art competition for the schools in Clare and Gladwin County, and they're talking about having a talent show. And they want to do some work starting this fall with the Clare County Historical Society. Uh, so they already are kind of working and networking because they're already working with the schools and they're already talking about working with the historical society. So I would recommend to them to, to in addition to maybe doing some of the placemaking activities to uh, work some more with the networking. The Mackinac Arts Council, um, they of course have a lot of visitors between May and October. Um, and they support the music and art programs at the Mackinac Island Public School. And then they also provide art workshops. And they also work with the Mackinac Art Museum. So again, I think they would be good for networking, although they really, um, it certainly is a place, place-making type activities that are already happening there. They could go maybe a step further and do some more of the networking type uh, activities. And so that is it for the question, uh, or the presentation. I'm wondering if there's any questions. Let's see if I, can. I want the audience to, to know that um, this is a very short summary of all of the work that Kimberly has been doing. So if, if you feel as though there's a lot of information that's going to be missing, you can find it in her co-learning plan when she's finished with it. Um, she's kind of wrapping it up, I think, uh, towards the end of this month. Um, it'll be in our hands, and then we'll begin our publishing process, and then it'll be um, online as well on our website eventually. Um, and we will alert everyone you know, through the, the REI network and all the participants here at the webinar when it is up. But I just wanted to, to mention that because um, I've, I've already read her co-learning plan drafts that we've gone through, and there's, there's more information um, there that might answer some questions that you're thinking of. But I, I was kind of interested here, when you started off, and I don't know if I missed this or not, but we were talking about larger cities, larger urban, mm -hmm. I think is what you're looking at. They do not have arts councils. Not that I, not that no, I could find. Not that I could find. So can you explain to me, I mean, how did arts councils become what they are, and is there some history do you know? Uh, usually it's, it's local artists get together and say, hey, let's work together and, mm -hmm. and form a group. So, uh, and they're, you know, usually geographically um, put together. Um, you know, some, a lot of it is countywide. So I think Kalamazoo is part of a countywide arts council, and I, th and I think Lansing is a Lansing area arts council which is more than just the city. But there's not one specifically a Detroit Arts Council. There's a lot of things going on in Detroit, and they're part of a lot of other things. But it's not, there's no, nothing that's specifically called an Arts Council. And Grand Rapids had one, which uh, I think just two or three years ago, they, they dissolved. So. I wonder why. It's, it's very much involved in the arts, Right. Linking it to business creation and innovation. Stuff. Right. Or maybe they're um, maybe maybe their work was done. You know, if if you're an arts council and you're trying to you know get an arts scene established in your area, I would say that Grand Rapids would be an example where it was successful. Okay. Um, but I I don't know the details of that. I do know someone who was one of the last recipients of one of their grants. 
he certainly had opinions about it, but not necessarily any factual information that, that I wouldn't go forward with. And you know, a lot of times these these organizations are um, run by volunteers, and at some point, it's almost a, like a sustainability issue. Like if you're retiring and you don't want to you don't want to do this anymore, and there's there's no there's been no next generation kind of cultivated to take over the reins, then you just sort of dissolve. So. Um, or else maybe a funding stream could dry up or different things happen. The members of the Arts Council typically are probably pretty good artists. I and mean, these are prominent. They have some, maybe an name almost. Artists, maybe, or maybe. Or they're just arts enthusiasts or people have, who have a good idea. I know someone up in Oscoda County, she just had an idea and she presented it and they gave her some funding to start an arts council. And she, she is an artist, but she doesn't really have like name recognition. She just lives there and she's an artist and she had an idea. Okay. And they said, okay, here's some money, make it happen. So, so I, this is just a comment. Mm -hmm. um, I know that you surveyed economic developers and I don't remember if you said which group and I won't say who it was if you didn't, but um, I was kind of taken back that so many of them said the traditional definition. I don't know if you want to go back to that um, slide. Um, well, two people, you, two people actually referred me to the, um, go back. referred me to the dictionary definition. So two people um, Two people said, saying. go to, you know, refer to a dictionary. Okay. But then, but yes, yeah, so. Creates, creating, creativity with the words that Right, and new. But it's, you know, innovation, the root of the word is the same as the root of the word new. So it kind of, you know, it's there. It's in there. But don't we hear so often, and I don't know if the listeners, participants feel the same way, and we have a few other participants here in the room, I'm, I mean, I, I don't know a lot about this, but in what I've understood lately is that studies are saying that the adaptation, using your word up there, mm -hmm. is oftentimes where innovative ideas are coming from. Mm -hmm. It's adapting something that wasn't maybe performing at the level or, or wasn't producing at the level, and so that it's been adapted or it's been changed slightly and everyone says, oh, this is, this is innovative. I mean, right. to use an example, um, you know, a lot of what's online now, you know, as far as YouTube and Google and all of those, the technology was already there. Right. So somebody said we would take technology and do this with it. So if we didn't reproduce technology over and over again, it was the same technology. I mean, maybe that's not the best example, but... And then the non-traditional, I'm surprised that the economic developers didn't say that also. But see, a lot of, like, the, let me go back to, let me go back, you know, um, kind of in here, there's a lot of people that were writing about innovation were talking about how it's a change from something that's already existing, but it's not completely starting over. Mm -hmm. So it is more of an adaptation. Um, or even in the, with the improvisational yes, type of right, thing, where right. you've got something and you have to change it because yeah. there's a problem, it's a necessity. It's not something you need. Where no the next step is innovation, where you're almost, you want novelty or something new in response to the, pro the problem. It's, that, it's not necessarily that you have to change how you're doing things, but it's not that you want to change how you're doing things because you want different results. Were you surprised by this, or did it um, grow? Yeah, a lot of people were saying grow, and, and, and that, that surprised me. Um, so it's interesting, I mean, we're talking about creativity and innovation in terms of economic development, yet our economic developers 
are strictly seeing it as creating new, growing, foster and facility. They don't see it as collaboration, which is over and over again, the studies are saying that that's not a lot right. of great ideas. But I think collaboration is, is an innovation itself. It's, oh, it's an activity. It it's not really a, a definition, you know, working alone or collaborating. Like collaborating is, a, is an innovation rather than a definition of it. Okay, so we have a region somewhere in Michigan and we want to be more creative and innovative. And so I think what your, your premise is is that maybe an arts council is the venue. To, to use and maybe right. reaching out to younger people, offering mm -hmm. programs to them, um, increasing your your understandings of ethnicity or diversity, mm -hmm. and increasing just the numbers of ethnicity right. or whatever culture that you have. And then you talk about networking mm -hmm. a couple of times. Can you maybe elaborate on what you mean by that? Yeah, so when um, a lot of times when people are artists, and they have a lot of good ideas, they are kind of in an, an underground type of situation where they're talking to themselves, and, or not themselves specifically, they're talking to other artists or they're working alone. And, you know, you can paint at home all the time. No one's going to see your picture. You know, you need to work with, and it's not going to immediately get into a gallery. There needs to be something in the middle. You know, you do a couple shows at an art council, Someone that has a gallery sees your piece and they want to put it in their show and in, in, in their gallery. So I think that um, even any other kind of creative ideas, you know, that, I mean, this could work. I guess this is kind of what the the REI network is doing. I mean, you're you're taking people's ideas and you're you're taking them and then you know, kind of processing them yeah. and talking about them and then possibly bringing it up into the the practice world, you know, so um, that's kind of, you know, it's kind of a, a hub role, and arts councils, I think, can do that um, for helping the people, um, definitely, you know, you, you people are, are social creatures, so they need to have, you know, you live up north in the woods, and, you know, every once in a while, you want to go around and be around other people, you know, it's not you know, even if you live in the city, it can be really isolating to live in the city even. Or if none of your family and friends directly are artists and you want to talk to other artists, you go to where the artists are. So inspiring um, mm -hmm. kind of creative mm -hmm. and people the creative types. Right. And you have conversations and feed off of thoughts and bounce ideas back and forth and or you'll see somebody else's work and think, I like that and it makes me think of something else and I want to try it this way. So um, do you have any questions or you want to see if there's more comment on? We're going to check the question box again and see if we've got another one on there. Mm -hmm. I guess it's surprising that it doesn't have a long tail probably. I'm sorry, go ahead. Um, I'm just surprised that they didn't have uh, centers in like bigger cities. Oh, oh yep. Yeah, I, I know. I'm surprised too. Like especially Grand Rapids because they have that huge every year. The okay. archives and everything. Like, well, there maybe have been replacements for the arts council because maybe it, the, their arts council wasn't able to do some of the things that these new archives. Yeah, because every year they have like a huge archive. Yeah, yeah our prize is interesting. Yeah, I see. Yeah, it is, but Art Prize is a lot of people from out of town coming in. Art Prize is not really developing the artists in Grand Rapids. Okay. It's more of a, almost like a tourist event. Yeah. Where they, they're it's getting people. people mm -hmm. So, I, I can... I don't know why the box is so small. Okay, so, so someone asked, I'm curious how many arts councils were surveyed and how many responded. I have that information. Let me pull... Go ahead, Kimberly. We're going to try to fix it for you. Okay. We're having trouble seeing the box. It's kind of small. Sorry, so we're going to have to call over you. Okay. Go ahead, Kimberly. Do you want to answer this? Oh, I'm uh, getting to that. I'll get Here to that. Here we go. Yay. After questions oh. now, everybody. Okay. 
Okay, let me get to... So... Um, there was 22 responses total, uh, which is a response rate of 23% of possible participants. Um, if you compare that to the participation rate for the Michigan Cultural Data Project, which um, collects the economic information about the arts sector, um, they collected data from 346 out of approximately 2,000 possible participants, or 17%. So our response rate was slightly higher than their um, at 23%. So um, let's see. Uh, placemaking. Yes, placemaking seems to be widely used buzzword today. What are some of the activities included in that? Um, there's a lot of activities included in that that are being done through the um, uh, Community Economic Development Association of Michigan. They're having a lot of placemaking. Um, um, like activities and workshops and it really it's it is a widely used buzzword and there really are a lot of different activities it's kind of um, because it's an old concept it's just place-based development you know whether rather than so it's basically anything that's place-based rather than people-based where instead of saying we're going to help these people through education or we're going to do job training or we're going to do whatever, we're going to work on the place rather than the people. Um, I don't know if that really answers the question, but the, some of the activities include, I know, like doing streetscapes or, um, you know, adding in out, outdoor seating, um, different things like that. Placing art. Placing Outside, art. Right? Mm -hmm. Yep, it's changing the place. So um, even uh, Sam Schultz, I know who this is, and he attended, I believe it was a full day workshop on placemaking. Hmm. And I know that you probably know this too, but Mishta is offering um, some, some courses. I believe that's where Sam might have taken those. Hmm. Mm -hmm. but, so he, he does know a little bit about it. I don't right. know, Sam, if you want to maybe say something in the chat box about who it is that you were working with on that that uh, training session. It might be helpful to others to learn. Yes. Um, yeah, and I would definitely refer to the Community Economic Development Association of Michigan or uh, MISHTA or um, there's a, a Michigan website called myplace.org and there's a lot of stuff going on in there and um, there's just there, there. It is a buzzword right now, but <laughs> that's uh, you know historically the um, at least with community development it it goes back and forth from place to people. So like in the progressive era, um, you know around the turn of the century, turn of the last century, um, it was very place based. Like they were you know there's a lot of immigration and a lot of um, immigrants coming into the cities and they wanted to clean up the kind of tenements and slums and make them better um, and they did that by place-based and then it switched into people-based so it kind of historically it, it, it kind of there's a some some years it's place-based and then they're like no it's different we need to do it people-based and so they do people-based um, right now it's kind of a mix you know, there are definitely some place-based activities and there are definitely some people-based activities going on. Um, we found any best practices for creating an innovation culture in the workplace or focused on the community approach. Um, there definitely is a lot of research about innovation culture in the workplace. Um, a lot, um, uh, some of the stuff about um, um, competition or even just finding new ideas. I, I read an article um, from the New York Times. It was talking about um, pe 
people getting innovative ideas when they stop thinking about something for a little while. They go and stare out the window for a few minutes or something like that and it's then true. and then go back to it and it's fresh, you know. So a lot, you know, a lot of organizations are having these rooms where people can go play basketball or like they have a, a foosball table or something set up and people kind of interact and get the blood flowing and um, Right, right. I think the difficulty with the, you know, creating an innovation culture is that you don't want to say this is the only thing. You don't want only new things because you want it to be based on the traditional way. You want to just be kind of fine-tuning the traditional things and doing new things. Um, to comment. Yeah, it seems in the vernacular that in innovation is more reactive lately than pushing forward with something absolutely new, which I think is true. If you don't want to, um, you don't want to just throw out the automobile mm -hmm. and say we're going to just completely do something new. No, you want to change it. Small jets, you know, <laughs> right? There's any other there's some comments? Yeah, I'll read the comments. I'm just looking for more questions. I like the concept of innovative creativity that was described. That's good. Um, the comment just said right. I don't know what, at what point that came through. And novelty. So novelty um, is actually from the same word as innovation. So innovation and novelty are, um, as far as etymology, they are the same thing. Because novel and novus and innovate are all the same thing. So when you think of novelty, it's, it's, it's a newness to it. There is that other kind of connotation of novelty where it's like, trinkets and things like that. But, yeah, yeah. And then creating something new for creation's sake. So that's kind of more, I guess, an innovation, like where you want to create something new uh, rather than um, you could do things the same way or things the same way aren't working. And so you're actively seeking for something new. Also, we have new way of structuring organized activity. Let's see. Valuing diversity is a value in itself for fostering novel interactions that could create ideas not before seen, and benefits could include economic growth. Yes. So another part, I, I didn't really include it too much because it's not easily implemented, but you know, there was a lot of talk in the business school literature of the importance of uh, people living in another culture, you know, like a, um, going abroad, studying abroad for however long, because you go to another country and you can see how things are done differently. You know, they... Their street lights sound different, you know, the little beeps when you're going to the crosswalk or, you know, they, you know, oh, they have a bike lane and bike highway through Amsterdam. Like, that's interesting. You know, there's, there's different, you see different uh, ways. Um, that's obviously not something that can be implemented. Like, we can't take the entire state of Michigan and make sure everybody goes on a foreign exchange trip. But I think that maybe a next step from diversity trainings could be more of a specific cultural exchange within the state, you know, where, um, you know, instead of going to study abroad, you know, someone from the city goes and lives in the country for a few months or someone, from, you know, they do it a little bit. I know people have like a semester in Detroit where they go, schools will have students go live there for a while. Um, so I don't know if that is something that could be a next step, but I think that First, just having more conversations about valuing diversity uh, can be important. You know, in my final work in my master's program, the, the, 
create a class mm-hmm. that came out the, the, the journey for us. Right. I know that a lot of people are now kind of slamming his work and not seeing any validity to it, but I think it had some value in there. Yeah. And, and, and I was looking at where in some of our urban areas, because that's supposed to be the place where innovation kind of occurs, where do we have kind of a nice blend of younger millennials with diversity at the same time, and maybe where there's opportunity? Right. And if you look, that's Detroit. Because Possibly. Are, there's not really that much of a blend in Detroit, though. But there is, if you look in southwest right. Detroit, and kind of the Delray. Mm-hmm. But, but if you were to tell anybody that that could be a hot spot right, with right. the right you know, funding or the right programs, that maybe if you incorporated that area of the city in a little more into the decision making of the downtown or right, right. You know, bring those people to a different level that are living in that area and allow them to maybe have some say in what's going on. But people were laughing at me saying, well, it's a terrible place. It's an industrial right. area, and you know we need to focus more on the core of downtown. But I think it all needs to kind of right. be worked together somehow, blended together. But I mean, I, I think so. That's what Richard Florida was probably supposed to say. Yeah, really but his his there. definition of diversity was very narrow, and um, I I was actually trying to use some of his stuff in my my conversation or my, my words about diversity and I really couldn't find anything and in fact he had one quote, I should have brought the book with me because I did get it from the library where he was saying that actual ethnic diversity is um, not good for what he was proposing. His definition of diversity right, so he was talking about like a melting pot index where different people were kind of coming from different countries but um, his definition of diversity was, is very much based on um, uh, like gay people. Like th- uh, that kind of diversity is what he was looking for. Oh, yeah, right. And um, uh, so it's very, I mean, it, I think that's still great, but I think that that's very narrow. Mm-hmm. And that, um, and he did specifically say something about actual ethnic diversity is um, not good for the kind of economic things that he was discussing. So. Mm-hmm. Um, in the end, the idea behind this is to look at how can we maybe help arts councils or even groups similar to arts councils right. really help to produce the generation in their region that mm-hmm. will start new companies, that will right. maybe take an idea to the next level and invent something, a product or a service or whatever. Mm-hmm. So, you know, there are other studies that are being conducted here actually out of this center um, that I'm going to hopefully be able to introduce you to the individuals that are on that team that are looking at it, but they're looking at creative spaces within a company or, oh, right. or how is that company creating new in their own house within their employment there. But, and also asking them, did you have any arts and crafts experiences that maybe led you to be this type of person that can think this way? Was this a part of your your youth or in your right. college days? Or are you an artistic person now? Do you play a musical instrument? Do you mm-hmm. paint? You know, and, and are you also very scientific and you're able to do something with stem cell research or whatever? Right. So I, I will definitely yeah, that's, those. that sounds great. Yeah, the um, you know, really this could be adapted to lots of other things. I was thinking about that, like um, community centers or even like a YMCA or things like that, you know, because there are a bunch of them, you know, a lot of cities have community centers or YMCAs that you could actually go to this community center and say, are you doing these kind of activities? You know, ask them the same questions that I ask the arts councils, yeah. and then say, okay, well, with this community center, 
we can make it a network hub, or this community center, we could you know, have some diversity training. Um, I haven't been able to get a hold of them, so I haven't particularly quoted them or talked about it, but I did want to mention that there's an organization in Detroit, I think it's near southwest Detroit, but they actually have created a, a curriculum for cultural competency through the arts, where they actually have created, you know, a series of workshops where people go or they spend a whole day at these trainings where they they do art activities and use the art activities to discuss. Um, but unfortunately, they're very busy and I haven't heard back from them. So, um, so I haven't been able to. Well, if you wanted to add anything to the learning plan, go a little bit of a direct different direction. Right. Just a little bit of time. Right. Pursue that. It looks like we're getting close to the end of the hour, and I know that a webinar um, is starting at three o'clock, also on Canvas. Oh, okay. So because of the licenses, we have to actually say goodbye to everybody. Okay. Um, but I wanted to thank you very much, and really, this is great. Um, keep up the good work, and I know you're not really finished yet with your coloring pen. Mm -hmm. We're all excited to read it, and um, we'll be promoting it through the network. And Kimberly, hopefully, we'll be presenting at the summit. Yeah. Um, she's going to be there and so you can ask her lots of questions and maybe she'll have some new kinds of areas of research that she's um, gone into. But thank you for your time and yeah, you're welcome. I think we're, we're all done here. So look thank for the, the webinar recording on the website um, and we do have another webinar tomorrow um, with Lakes Perry State University Ralph Wilhelms and he will be talking about the website that he designed with a designed with a student group um, on exporting the um, industries or products or services in the Eastern UP. It's a, a really neat website. It's just in the beginning stages, but he'll be talking about how um, exporting is becoming a much more of a um, kind of an interest for that region of the UP and how Lake Superior State is definitely getting involved and um, the other partners that are up there. So that'll be at 2 o'clock, right, guys? Mm -hmm. 2 to 3. Um, and if you don't know where to find the flyer, it's also on the website, and we'll be sending it out um, through social media, Twitter. And So hopefully you'll join us tomorrow. Thank you very much, and we hope to talk to you tomorrow or at other webinars coming up. Bye.